right, we're recording. And I'm gonna readjust and make sure I'm still in the boundaries and we all have to accept that we're recording. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll post this up. Um, I'll send you the link, of course, as always. Um, and I'll also, uh, we'll have the PDF as well. So, um, Yes, of course. And then I have two extra packets. So when I was prepping, I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna prep two more packets. So I've still got two packets. So I might offer them in my newsletter and see if someone wants them. But if you know someone that wants them, let me know. Um, and, um, oh my goodness, my child. People are texting me. Jonathan took Mary into the movie um, and he wants me to send him a picture of an Ace Hardware coupon. God, hold on. <laughs> Y'all, it's it's uh, it's definitely taking a village right now. Um, Marianne is. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna pause the recording because I know I can do that. There's some magical button where I can do that. Okay. And so um, I just chuckled because I was like, you know, this is definitely um, like, that's a big commitment. You know, I was like, how much time is this going to take? And like, what are we, you know, what are we cross country? And the main thing is actually the bra and the shoes. That's what you really want to care about. Okay. The bra and the shoes. Good. Yep. Um, glad that we have that on recording. Um, Sorry. <laughs> no, it's hilarious. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. Does she need spikes? Will she need spikes? No. No. Okay. But uh, I would take her to a really nice shoe place and have them watch her run and make sure she's got the right shoes for her running style. Yeah, that definitely, like I was telling her, I was like, look, there's a ton of running stores here in Austin, like Fleet Feet. And I was like, we're going to go, like, if you make the team, we're going to go and we're going to get you a good pair of running shoes because like that made a huge difference. Cause I did so I've done one marathon um, and I did several like half marathons and stuff in my like twenties. And so like that made a huge difference once I figured out like what shoe I needed, which actually ended up being a men's shoe. Um, <laughs> it was, it was the right shoe for my foot. And so, you know, like you just never know. And so that's why I told her, I was like, and she's like, but that'll be expensive. I said, but it's okay because like we're buying it and it'll get you through you know, a season. So, um, but yeah. So anyways, yay. Hoping she makes the team. We'll see. Yeah. Um, she's oh, not gosh, good luck. She's so yeah. cute. She is. She's so funny. And she's got choir, which she's excited about and art, which she's excited about. Yay. She, our art wasn't on the schedule to begin with, but then it got on there and I think she's excited. So that's good. Um, and then she's doing a, it's called PE pause. It like helps kids in special ed with um, PE. Um, and so they like partner up and they have like a PE program and then library aid, um, which she's really excited about. And um, cause they get to check out extra books. And so she like comes home on Friday with like a bag full of like books, you know? And I was like, oh, that's good. So um, for a kid with dyslexia, she wants to be a reader, you know, like so hard. And so it's so sweet. And she, there was a book called Game Changer. Anyways, she read it on Friday. Like she like stayed up late and she finished, she's like, I finished a book in a day. Like that's something that like some of her friends have done and she's never been able to do. And so she was really excited about that. And oh, awesome. um, yeah, so I think it'll be good for her. She'll have a good year. And I guess her science class seems really cool. So she's excited. I think they're dissecting things, so. Um, <laughs> which was not my favorite <laughs> <Naomi> class. <laughs> that was not the one for me. Let's just say that. So I, I remember thinking like, no, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be my, my jam, you know? So, um, okay. Well, so in your packet, you have, um, the really fun, box, which these boxes, um, I figured a lot of you might not have them. And so, um, it's easy to look past the boxes that Stampin' Up! makes because we're like, oh, we'll get them some other time. Um, they do fold a little funny though. So, um, I'm going to take this one apart and show you. It's not, it's just not how you think it would go. Um, I mean, it's not rocket science, but, um, it has 
two large base flaps that I just wasn't, I just wasn't expecting a base flap this large. You know, I've never seen, I've never seen it like that. But what it does is it lends a lot of support to the box. What I would recommend is if you don't want this flattened again, um, is to go ahead and put a little bit of like tear and tape or something on this little flap because it, it tucks in, but then I, I find it annoying that it kind of bows out a little bit and I really want it to be nice and flush, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you don't do that, you know, but you could put some, you know, I don't know. I would do tear and tape only because it's, you know, a stronger adhesive. Um, and, but I really like them. I think they're pretty. I like the touch of gold. I think they would fit, like I got the square brownie pan from um, Pampered Chef and I'm like, ooh, I could fit some square brownies in here. Um, so, you know, definitely a cupcake. Um, all of our packaging is food safe. Um, that does not mean, <laughs> for instance, with the jam jars, you should not be making jam in them, which apparently people tried to do in the plastic jam jars, which then caused them to be melted plastic jam jars. Um, but you can put food in them. <laughs> so this is food safe and you can have food touch it. Um, although I would probably wrap them in plastic before I put them in here, but you could definitely put like a stack of cookies in here. Um, you know, I think it's a really sturdy box. And then I did the same thing on the lid. So I already glued mine together, um, but the lid has kind of that same function where it has like two really large flaps that go in. Um, and I think it just makes for a really stable box. Um, I was really, I was impressed and I think it's very pretty with the gold dots. So, um, so we're just gonna make the little piece that goes on the top. Um, and I only have like, I think three ink colors for today. So the ink colors are like shaded spruce, if you have it. Um, if you don't have shaded spruce, um, I would say like old olive would look good. Um, garden green might be a little too brown, like it might be a little too dirty. Um, soft succulent would probably be fine. Um, pear pizzazz would be fine too, depending on what piece you got. What's interesting is this paper has like some of the sheets have like a lot of the pear pizzazz and then some of them have a lot of the shaded spruce. So it kind of depends on which one you got as to, you know, what you got. Let me, I'm going to make this spotlight for everyone. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, so it kind of just depends on, you know, what piece you got. Um, and then we're using the Biggest Wish stamp set, which is really fun. If you don't have it, you've got a sentiment set somewhere and you can do virtually the exact same thing. Um, I'm sure I have faith in you. Um, the reason I like this set a lot and the reason I got it was I liked the combination of like the script, the sans serif and the serif. Like I thought it was really cool. Um, and so it's one of the sets that really caught my eye from the beginning. Um, so we could say happy birthday. We could say, um, Lisa, yeah. Which set does the dye come from for the label? Oh yeah. Um, that yes. comes from a set. Um, let's find out. Hold on. <laughs> I think it's the tasteful labels. I think so too. Yeah. Tasteful labels. That's it. Tasteful labels. Um, I like that set a lot. Like there's a lot of good shapes in there. So, uh, all right. How about, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it opposite. I'm gonna do birthday and then I'm gonna do happy. Happy, happy. Nope, friend, happy. Yeah. So what's interesting is it's all the same words in both the serif and the sans serif font, which is kind of cool. So you can mix and match them, you know, as you want. 
um, which I think is really cool. So this is a, a winner stamp set for me. Um, all right, so we'll keep our little box there. I'm just marking my edges. I'm gonna use shaded spruce and black. And I'm gonna do I'm gonna do birthday in the shaded spruce. So I think that I stamped off, if I'm not mistaken, but we'll find out. I think you did too, because mine came out really dark. Yes. Uh, so flip your label over. Uh, <laughs> like, hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I stamped it off. Shaded spruce is one of those colors, like it's a really dark color. Um, and that's one reason why I used it for this other card too, is because it, yeah, like that's stamped off and that's pretty dark anyway, you know, so. Uh, all right, and then happy. I think I need to re-ink my shaded spruce. It might be time. It's kind of blotchy. That been one you used a lot. I have used that color a lot. I like it. It's a great color, yeah. It's just, it's beautiful. All right. So I'm gonna do this one like this. So a little happy on a birthday, and that one's a little happy on a birthday, but different. So, and then this is obviously a pretty easy, like just pop it up with some dimensionals and do your thing. Um, I put a bunch of the jewels. I gave you guys like a couple strips of them. Um, so I think you got some, you know, some variety, some bigs and some smalls in your packet. Um, and I think I tucked them in an envelope. So just feel your envelopes and find which one I tucked it in. Um, but these are those really nice, um, in color, those in color jewels that are just so beautiful. Um, hey, who is that, Julie? Uh, it's Emma. Hey, Aww. Emma. Yeah, hi, Emma. Hey, cutie. Hi. Anyway, sorry. Hey, don't be oh. sorry at all. Oh, so cute. You had a good day. We just all hung babies. her um, new minted picture that I got her and her bookcases. So that's what we were doing. And then I had difficulty with my computer. That's why we were late. But anyway. <laughs> All babies deserve the spotlight. Uh, 100%. So um, I'm a sucker. What can I say? I love cute babies. We went by and dog sat for a dog this weekend. And they had a little baby, like a 18 month old or so. Oh my gosh, she was so cute. And he was the smiliest, happiest little boy. I have not seen a little, a little kid that happy in a long time. Um, all right, I think I'm gonna flip mine. I want a lot of that dark on there too. I don't know, some little kids can be fussy. Marion was a fussy baby, God bless her. Um, hey! Just wait until she finds out that I'm going to be helping with the PTA. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, you know, I'll just wait and see if there's anything I can do. And they're like, we need help for the um, teacher's workroom, like cutting paper and copies and, you know, doing all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, sign me up. She's going to die. Um, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> Although, I don't know, if I have to take her at 7.15 every morning, God only knows, I might have to come back and go to sleep. That's really early. Her school doesn't start till nine. So like 7.15 is, I mean, that's, that's considerably, considerably early. So, uh, okay. All right, so that's easy. 3D project, sneezy, easy done, beautiful. Questions, concerns, comments? I like the metallic with the craft. I do too. Like, I really, yeah, I love craft. Like, I've always loved our craft stuff. When we used to have like craft envelopes, I would use them all the time. And then when they took them away, I was very sad. 
Um, and I really, I thought this was really pretty and I thought, well, we can just draw that out some more by putting a little metallic on the top too. So I thought this was really, really pretty. Um, and I'm jazzed about these boxes. So uh, I think we'll, we'll have some good use for them for sure. So, and you can put a lot in here. Like these are really big. Um, I was, I was surprised, so. Yay. All right, cool. Um, I have no idea what package is in y'all's thing first. Um, we'll do, we'll do this one first and then we'll do the two pink ones. We'll stay with the shaded spruce for a few minutes. So you've got one that's shaded spruce. You've got one card base that's melon mambo, and then you've got another card base that's white. So, um, this is the shaded spruce one. So this one's the simplest card I've ever made in my life. Um, Yay. <laughs> but it's cool because it uses a stamparatus. Now you can achieve this without the stamparatus. It will just be a little bit harder. Um, but, um, but I think it has a really cool effect. And because we're using shaded spruce, we can do this where you get that ombre look, right? Where we go from dark to light. Um, other colors that do well using this is like Bermuda Bay. Um, any of the purples will do really well. Um, the pink gets pretty light, but like, a, like the Melon Mambo would probably do a pretty good job. Um, so any of your deep dark colors will make this really cool kind of ombre look. So, and then this one I did hello and on the inside friend. Um, and this works well when your paper is so this is, this is the sneaky part. You guys got the sheets that have like it lines up well on this side. I gave myself a sheet that doesn't line up as well. Like I'm actually gonna run it over on this side. So I'm gonna have to move my stamp for, for mine to work, but it's okay. Um, but I'll show you how to set this up, so. Um, okay, so let's do that. We're gonna put that guy down there. All right, so any kind of stamp positioning tool, right? I mean, all your, all it is is, you know, a platform that has a hinge. Um, in this case, it has a like a foam mat that we use with the photopolymer. It just gives it a better contact. And then I like to just protect my little foam mat. And then we're going to, in my case, I'm going to try to stamp it. Nope. I'm going to try to, I'm going to stamp it going down this way, but I'm going to move my sheet over just a little bit. Um, one of the things you can, oh, hello, I forgot my um, things, magnetic. Uh, one of the things you can do is you can mark your corners so that you remember like, oh yeah, that's where I'm supposed to have this piece of paper. Um, I already got ink on my finger. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? All right, so, all right, we're gonna get our, stamp out and we want the darkest image to be on the bottom. So we're gonna kind of line that up where we want it. And then it's the hinge step technique, which sounds crazy, but all it is, and because it's photopolymer, it's gonna keep pulling my paper and I'm gonna have to keep repositioning it, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna stamp it and then we're gonna lift straight up and then we're going to stamp it and then we're and we're just going to keep stamping it but we're not going to re-ink it right and that's what's going to give us that dark to light look so we're going to start here at the bottom and hopefully um it doesn't pull up as much but we'll see and then if you had ink spots um this would be a good use of an ink spot because if not I end up getting ink all over the plate, even when I try not to. Now, if you don't have this stamparatus or a stamp positioning tool, you can just literally take your block and stamp it, stamp it, stamp it, stamp it. It's not super hard. Um, and luckily this stamp set is very square. So it stamps really well. 
but I want to make sure it's inked really well this first time. So the first inking is really the most important. And then after that, it doesn't really, like it's just gonna wear off. All right, so I'm gonna get in there. I'm gonna press down, make sure I get a nice first impression. And then good. And then move that. Now we're gonna do the second one. Yes, while I was cutting this paper, I felt I was on a roll. And so that's why I decided to just make the extra packets because I was like, well, I'm already cutting it. So I might as well just keep going. <laughs> it was hard enough to cut it the first time. This paper's so pretty. <laughs> and you'll see, I'm just kind of moving it back into place each time so that, you know, they line up. And on the last one, you do have to press pretty hard to get any kind of ink off, but a little bit of ink comes off. All right, and then there we go. So we've got our hello, 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 hello. And it looks really cool. I like that it kind of fades into this, you know, really fun swirly stuff. Um, and everybody's will look very different because all the pieces cut so differently. Um, and then you have a inner piece and you can just stamp your friend or whatever it is you're stamping. And if you don't have this stamp, you can do the hinge technique with lots of different stamps. So if you don't have this stamp set, that technique works with a lot of different stamps. Um, and it just literally, you know, takes your, um, your image up, you know, a block, you know? Um, and so, I don't know, it's been a fun one. When we get a good font set, I like to do it. Um, I, I think the last time I did it was a couple of years ago though. So. All right, and then friend. Awesome. And then I just put a couple of the uh, little rhinestones. They don't call them rhinestones, jewels, they call them. So I put some of the soft succulent and the evening evergreen. No, actually this one's the yellow. This is the pale papaya, I think. Um, no, that's not the name of the color. It is the name of the color. Yeah, pale papaya, but it looks so yellow. Anyway, so you can definitely do like the yellow, the soft succulent, the evening. I mean, you can do whatever jewels you would like on there. It's fun. All right, let me zip my guy together. Yeah, Lynn, were you the person who said you bought this paper and you didn't know what to do? With it? Oh no, Pat Witter was the person that said she bought this paper and she didn't know what to do with it. Because you commented, right? I think on the... Um, I think I had posted a picture of it and mm -hmm. someone had said that they didn't know what to, what to do with the right. paper. Right. And so, I mean, it's so pretty. I mean, you can really let it speak for itself, right? I don't really think you have to do much to make this <laughs> stamp a sentiment and call it done, right? Like it's just gorgeous. Um, and no one has to know that you didn't make it pretty. <laughs> you just have really good taste. <laughs> That's what I think. All right, I will put some bling on mine. Let's see. I kind of have like some weird like leftovers. So let's see. Purple, can I put purple in here? I thought that would look a little weird. Let's see. I'm like, Meh. I'll save my purple and pink for another day. I will say I've used that stamp set more often than I expected to. The, the one that goes with this paper, the artistic whatever expressions or? Right, yeah, it's yeah. a great set. 
Yeah, I think at first when I got it, I, I, I was like, oh, this looks like it has, you know, it'll take work, you know, but it's actually really, yeah, it's a beautiful set. Yeah. Um, fun. Oh, that's like on the hello. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Okay, there. <laughs> shouldn't block my font, right? So. Yeah, this was a fun card. I actually taught this one up at the front for like a beginner's card class in the neighborhood. Um, and this is completely doable. <laughs> Anybody can do it. All right. You ready for the next one? Ready. All right. And then Julie, you've got some friends who are going to come later and you're going to craft with them and help them. That'll be fun. All right. So now we have, oh, somebody's at the door. Hold, please. I don't know what it is. <laughs> that is so, so, so pretty. Love it. Have you had a good weekend, Sarah? Yeah, we're having a good one. Mostly stayed in, but good anyway. <laughs> we had How's the air quality. How's the air quality where you are, Julie? Great. Um, we okay. had a really big, beautiful celebration called West Fest last night, and the kids got to go on the bounce house and ride the bull, and we did a spinner and got these like rings, and um, what was the other thing that we did? It was just so fun. They had, oh, we got to ride on a train. That was Evan's favorite. <laughs> um, did I hear that's so, so beautiful? I did. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love all of it. Good. That's awesome. Um, so that was a smart cookie. And this has the um, sticky stuff on the back. So it's got the um, adhesive sheet on the back of it. So when it comes time to position this guy, fear not, because I did that. And then I did include a white liner. This is a really dark, the Melon Mambo is really dark. And I just felt like it needed a liner. You can stamp whatever you want on it, but um, I just at least needed something on the inside. So. So this paper is really interesting because there's pieces that have a lot of pink and then there's pieces that have like some white space. And I really like the ones with white space. So you guys got the white space pieces. These are kind of the heavier pieces and I feel like they're just really heavy, but it's okay. And then I did not punch myself a, uh, a white piece. So I will do that now, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, What's that punch called for this label? Is that the everyday label or something? Everyday label. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, it's an old punch and I use it a lot because it's just, it's got a really good width to it. Like, I don't know, it's got the perfect shape. And so I overuse it. I know, I know I do, but I like it. It's easy. Um, and everything fits. Like every time I try to like, I'm like, oh, I'll do this other punch. And then it never fits. And I'm like, well, forget it. I'm just going to stick with a punch. I know works, but I know they're going to retire it because that's what happens to punches. I like is they'll retire it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, really? Boo. All right. So then with this one, so you have a couple of choices here on your pinks. So this is an interesting paper because it's got melon mambo. It's got polished pink. It's got, but it has a lot of Melon Mambo. So that's why I did the Melon Mambo card base. I ended up stamping off with polished pink. You definitely, whatever you do for this secondary pink, this background, you have to stamp off. Um, and so you could do polished pink, you could do Melon Mambo, you could do Magenta Madness, um, which is like our three bright pinks right now you know now <laughs> three bright pinks <laughs> all bright together right how do you tell the difference right how do you sort it out so 
depending on how you hold them depends on kind of what you see, right? So for me, um, magenta madness is more of like a girly pink. So it's a, a girl, more, it's a pinker, a pinker hue. Melamamba definitely has a lot more red and then polished pink. Um, I feel like is a little bit dustier if that's a okay term to use. Like it's a beautiful pink. It's just a little dusty. Um, so it kind of depends on like, what are you going for? You know, what kind of pink do you want? If you want to match the card base, do Melon Mambo. Um, if you want to do something that's a little bright, you could do Magenta Madness or the Polished Pink. I'm probably going to do Polished Pink only because my Melon Mambo is brand new and I haven't opened it. So. And opening stamp sets is too much work today. So um, thanks. I have a different card base. I think it's maybe... It's a very bright pink. I don't think it's the melon mambo. You think it's maybe the polished pink instead? I do. It's possible. Um, let me get the paper out. I will say that at one point I got really confused with all my pinks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had some. I had some pink crisis because this is what happened. Like they look so similar, right? Um, of course not in the light, they don't, but as I was grabbing them, so I'm wondering, so do you think it's more of like a light pink or like a bright pink? Bright. It's very bright. It might be magenta madness then. Yeah. Cause this one's magenta madness. Okay. Um, I think I was meaning to give you guys melon mambo. Oh, here, that's a good way to see the difference. So this is Melon Mambo, this is Magenta Madness, and this is Polished Pink. Yeah. What do you feel like you have, Sarah? I don't think it's Magenta Madness. You think it's Melon Mambo? I think so. Okay, all right. I, I cut them all at the same time, minus one or two. So it's possible, Lynn, that you have a different color card base. Um, and you might have magenta madness because, you know, why not keep things interesting? Um, I definitely had a pink crisis in my office when I was working on this. I'll tell you that. Like I had to like resort all my paper again. Cause I was like, I don't even know what's happening it, there. And I didn't realize I kind of forgotten about magenta madness, honestly. Um, and then I pulled it out and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. Like I've got this and that's another pink as well. I was like, oh my gosh, why are there so many pinks? <laughs> um, so many bright pinks. Um, someone's really into pink. Um, but whatever pink you do this with, it honestly looks cute. Like I really, I do not think it matters. Um, I think the bigger thing that matters is that you stamp off <laughs> so that you can see your other piece. Um, and you might have to stamp off twice. Like, you know, you might stamp it once and go, yeah, okay, that's good, but maybe I need to do twice. This is stamped off once and I feel like that's okay. But this is polished pink, which is a lighter pink. My polished pink is like super watery. And even after like trying to stamp off like 15 times now, it's still so watery, it's leaving like little marks. Let me, my, yeah. Let me spotlight you. Play spotlight. <laughs> yep. <laughs> You're like, I don't want it's to. It's like leaving the little like marks here, even after trying to like, if you saw my stamp papers, they're ugly, but yeah, no. it's really watery. I don't know what to do. I think that it's a, it's, it's an interesting pink because see how my, I'm going to try to hold mine very still. See how it's a little bubbly. Mm -hmm. Like it's got, it's not. It's not my favorite pink. Let's I'm say gonna that. get out my melon mambo and make another label. <laughs> I don't like oh. it right now. And that's okay. Uh, yeah. It's not my favorite pink. Um, I think there's been a lot of people who've complained about it. I think that like purple posy it is a lighter color. And I think their they're ink manufacturers having a hard time with light colors um, for sure. 
Um, it doesn't bother me and I don't think it'll bother whoever gets this card, you know? Um, I think that they will be so stunned by the gold yes. floral that they will probably not notice anything, but you know, whatever. Um, and then I was careful when I made y'alls, there might be a couple of like little pieces that need to be popped out. I tried to get them all out. I think the only thing that might be left are the little pokies in the center of the flower. Um, I, I didn't want to pull too much of them out because then the backing starts to come off and then it just becomes a giant nightmare for you um, to try to, you know, get it adhered, so. And the back is very pretty too, but you know. Um, this side has gold, so it wins. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I very much like whenever there's a specialty paper and there's a side that has like gold or silver and a side that doesn't, I very rarely use the non shiny side. I'm like a little bird. I'm like, shiny? Yes. <laughs> I want all the shiny things. So just find yourself a good corner that you can peel that stuff off from. And then. Um, for instance, I ran out of gold paper, which is kind of wild. And so I ended up having to cut off some of my, like, I didn't get the full floral look, but that's okay because I can angle it so that I can hide it behind my label. <laughs> uh, that's the beauty. Not much about that. I really, um, these adhesive sheets, um, yeah, I'm going to have to buy like some stock in them because they've really made my crafting life better now that I'm using them consistently on all of the little tiny annoying things. Um, yeah, I, I will no longer be using wet glue to glue. I mean, well, you guys know my feelings about wet glue to begin with, right? Not a fan. <laughs> but now that I know this exists, I'm like never using wet glue ever again. So. I'm just proud of myself for cutting this paper up because I think I could have just stared at it forever. <laughs> All right, that might've been overkill on the dimensionals, but whatever. And this is also a simple card, right? It's just, it looks amazing because of this die cut, you know? Um, I felt like I was cheating this month, by the way. I'm just going to tell you that. Like when I designed the cards and I was like, these are all so easy. And <laughs> I, was, I like, I felt bad for a brief second. And I was like, no, they're just pretty and it's fine. <laughs> Very pretty. Yes, very pretty. And ta-da! Seriously. And actually, like, this class shows that if you have, like, a really stunning DSP, it's so easy to make great cards, right? <laughs> right. That's exactly it. I'm like, done, you know? Like, I mean, I feel that way with a holiday catalog, that Blackberry Beauty stuff or whatever that stuff is called. And then that silver paper. And then... Um, the whimsy and wonder with the pink is also, I mean, all three of those are just gorgeous. And there's really not a lot you need to do. Like throw a sentiment on, throw a few jewels and be done with it, right? Like this is, yeah, so pretty. This is the kind of paper you would like wallpaper a bathroom in, you know, like pretty sure. I would, uh, I would give permission for this. For sure. Julie, did it come out better with a different ink color? Are you happier? So, so, so much better. Yeah, let me see, let me see. It's just so, not dripping on the sides because the other one's too watery. Yeah, if it's really bad, you should just call them and have them replace it. I mean, one, yeah. ink pads are not expensive and you should try, but I will tell you that if it, it's like it's puddling on the edges, is that what it looks like? Yeah, it's doing it on mine too. Um, I'm accepting it as a tolerance of the ink <laughs> and I'm not having it replaced. Okay. Um, but I, but 
I don't think it hurts to call and say, hey, or email them and say, hey, you know, this is weird. It looks watery. Yeah. Um, you know, it could be a bad batch. Um, I think it's just because it's so darn pale. And I, you know, it doesn't show up as bad when you do it full strength. It's just it's such a pretty card. I'm over the ink because I like the card so much. <laughs> well, I'm so glad. Um, excellent. Well, then, how's everybody doing? Are we ready for the third one? So the third one is also not rocket science, but um, it's a little different. So, uh, okay. So this is the third card. Oh, yeah. Let me replace my spotlight. Here we go replace spotlight there we go all right so this is the third card so i wanted to use the gold stripe on this paper because it's really pretty too and i didn't want to forget about it and we've got that shimmer vellum now and so i thought it would be fun to do a little shimmer vellum and a little gold and make a really pretty card this way so this is our third card so um and it is also incredibly easy to make and I do not know the name of this punch, <laughs> but I will find it because uh, I know you're going to ask, Sarah. <laughs> She's like, and what punch is this? Let's see. This punch, it's the one that has the holes in this side of it that you can make. Label me fancy. There we go. Label me fancy. All right. So... With this one, this also has, um, I did the same thing with this one where I put the adhesive on the back of this vellum because I felt like it would just be a thousand times easier and it just peels off so pretty and so easy. And so, so you'll want to arrange it in a way where it's gonna kind of like tuck out from behind the gold. Um, and I'm gonna go a little higher with this one. There we go. So we're just gonna glue that down. Now I will say that like, I have this one leaf that just like refuses to stay down. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't worry too much if, you know, it, it doesn't all go down. Um, it's not gonna go anywhere, like not anywhere far, but I did pop up this on dimensionals. So this gold panel is actually on dimensionals um because I wanted to give it a little bit of height from the rest of it so we're going to put this up on dimensionals if you want if you don't want that's fine too it's your card but I did <laughs> and I just put I also felt like it was a way to ensure that the flower stayed down the vellum just seems a little more um resistant to adhering down than the gold paper did. I don't know why. All right. And I over-dimensionalized for sure, whatever. Although I saw somebody the other day that had like 27 on the back of their piece. Like, oh, I think it was Bruno. It was Kylie and Bruno Bertucci. They're like in New Zealand. And they're funny. And um, apparently Bruno, Kylie thinks Bruno over dimensionalizes. And so they had like a, you know, how many dimensionals is the right number of dimensionals kind of an argument. It was really funny. Um, like only couples could, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> and his hat, I mean, it was like just covered in dimensionals. <laughs> Um, okay, so for this one, this pink is the um, polished pink, and this vellum paper, I'm just going to look it up, I believe it's also polished pink, if I'm not mistaken, like a specialty paper, in color vellum, yeah, it's the polished pink, so in color shimmery. So I went all polished pink on this one, um, but you can stamp it however you want. So, 
Well, my friend Alicia won't be coming over on Tuesday. She just texted. She just got a positive COVID test. So oh. not, not crafting Tuesday, but. <sighs> Ew. Um, that's the worst. Um, maybe you can uh, package everything up and drop it off and let her. Uh, that stinks. Yeah. That's definitely been the, the, the problem. So I stamped this more to the side so I'd have room for my little bow, you know, on this side. Um, I will say this um, ribbon ties really pretty little bows. Um, it's really cute. It's a little slippery, so you have to kind of, you know, m manipulate it a little bit. Um, but it is, um, it ties really cute, soft little bows. So I kind of, you know, manipulate it down to the size I want, maybe, hopefully, we'll see. Uh, nope, too big. Uh -huh. Then you just kind of tell the bow who's boss, right? All right, here we go. And then I popped this up on dimensionals and like glued it flat on this little tab. So I just put like a little bit of tape runner behind that one tab. And then if I can find more dimensionals, <laughs> where do they go? They go someplace special, y'all. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm not sure. Let's do minis. Seriously though, if they were right here. Please tell me everyone else loses things on their desk. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, buggers. Come here, Mr. Dimensional. I don't think I would use minis for this, but hey, we're rolling with what we got. Let's see. All right. So now we can glue that guy down. We'll do a little blue dot for that one. I think it's funny to me how the pale papaya gems look yellow, like they're very yellow looking. If that's not a fancy card, I don't know what is. And look at those two bows, they're completely different. <laughs> Like, I don't know what happened to this bow. He's kind of funky. I mean, he's cool. I don't think I could ever tie a bow like that ever again, but. Uh... <laughs> yes, I've gone through many, many packages of these gems. <laughs> I wonder if I can like glue it down. No, we're just gonna stay right there. Cool, cool. So Melissa, so Sarah, the event that you're doing with the other demo that's is like I love cards or card day. What what is that event about? Yeah, I'm really excited. So um, okay, so that's a good reminder. So next month's card class is Halloween, and Woo! we're gonna. I know I'm excited, and we're doing <laughs> we're doing cute Halloween. So um, I'll be there, of course. So the cute Halloween set next month um, all in. Um, and mm -hmm. I need to look at the date because I want to make sure the fourth Sunday in uh, September. So one, two, three, four. Oh yeah. That's perfect. Lovely. Okay, good. It's not camping weekend. So that's good. I won't be exhausted. Yay. Um, <laughs> So fourth Sunday of the month, we'll do it on Zoom, same time as always, because this is just working. And I just, I think that we'll just, we're just going to have to keep going forward with our class as it is. Um, and I was going to change my pricing structure and how I did things. And I'm not going to for the fall. Like I've just decided to go back on that and I'll just continue to do $15 or free with a $35 order. 
Um, and, um, and we'll just proceed onward with that. And then maybe in the new year, I'll rejigger how I do my monthly classes. But for right now, this is all I can manage. Uh, oh, I didn't realize how different I made those two, one with a flower on the top and one with a flower on the bottom. Oh, and now I don't know which one I like better. Um, and then the, um, we're doing World Card Making Day. So World Card Making Day is the first Saturday in October, which is October 3rd, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and we're going to do on October the, oh, so the October 2nd is World Card Making Day, but on October 3rd, we're going to do an event out at Bella Vita, which is a retreat place here in Wimberley, but we're also going to do it via mail. So that's what Susan and I are meeting about this week because it's going to be um, Christmas themed. And it's, you're going to make six cards, but three are going to be donated to Dell Children's Hospital here, and three are going to go home with you. So you're going to make two of three designs, um, and it's um, $20, and, um, and then we're going to have a to-go option as well, um, and we'll have two to-go options. We'll have one where we um, make the cards for you and send them to you, or one where we send them to you and you can stamp them and do what you want. So we'll have all three options. And, um, and so I'm excited about that. I think it's two to five, one to four, something like that. I added it on Facebook already. It's not on my Stampin' Up! calendar, um, but it is on my Facebook calendar on, under events. And I'm really excited. Dell Children's Hospital, um, they give the kids um, cards on their lunch trays and they like to get a lot of cards. And so we're also going to do where if you donate handmade cards, you get door prizes. And we're going to do like for every five cards, you get an entry in the door prize drawing. And we're going to um, donate a whole bunch of cards to them. Oh, so cool. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. So I tell only, Zoe, she loves making cards for charities. Um, and I think we're going to stay away from get well. Um, and so that's what they said. Get well soon. Um, no messages like that. Um, so like, hello, happy birthday, Christmas, holidays. I think um, those are all safe, but nothing about getting well because many of them have chronic illnesses and they're never going to get well <laughs> they'll be well enough you know but they're, they're not going to be magically healed so um so yeah we're really excited about that and Dell's Children's has been super awesome they have like card making guidelines I mean they're like they're you know this is definitely something that they support and we're really excited to help support them so we thought this was a cool way to do it so um awesome. Yeah, so we've got a sign up form for that already on the page. There's a Google form um, on the um, Facebook page and I'll put the link in the newsletter too. I think I put the link in this last time, but it was a real soft announcement. Um, Susan and I kind of wanted to get our ducks in a row in terms of the mail-in option because we now have a feeling that people might want to do um, the mail option. Um, although we're really excited about the space. It's a really big space and there's a screened in porch as well. So so we can make the cards out on the screened in porch so people can like stamp at the stations and then go out to the screened in porch to like assemble and we think that'll be great and then we'll probably open the windows and get some good ventilation and stuff in there and we're going to do masks for that event like it's just going to be masks required because that's what we're going to have to do so um but we're excited about it and susan and i were jazzed to go out to bella vita and check it out and then um, I'm probably going to do a few more events out at Bella Vita. Um, she, it's a retreat facility, but on Sunday afternoons, she's already kind of checked out her Sunday guests. And so she's got this beautiful space. And so she said, you know, do you want to come and, um, you know, use the facility? So I think I'm going to do another class in December that'll be a stocking stuffer class. So that'll be really fun. Um, so, um, and I'll probably have a to-go option for that too, just because it won't be, I mean, if I do it for one, I can do it for the other. So, um, but yeah. So I'm really excited. It's good. And, um, met another lady who, um, in town was a demonstrator and she runs like 
the restaurant in town. There's not a lot here in Dripping Springs. Um, and so, um, but she was a demonstrator and she's got cards there for sale from another lady. And she's like, yeah, we can have your cards. And then you could do a class out in the garden. And I do like an art in the garden market. And so yay for getting settled in and having a chance to kind of explore some of the local venues and um, meeting people who want to do crafty stuff. So, <laughs> so, but I think that, you know, just continuing to realize that a lot of people aren't going to want to gather right now. And that's just not, you know, part of the jam. I am doing my in-person retreat in October and we'll see how that goes. Um, so that's October 22nd through the 24th. Um, and, um, we've got tons of space right now, <laughs> so not great. Cause that means I haven't filled my seats, but it's okay. Um, we've got room to space everybody out, which is really great. So everybody will have, I mean, they're eight foot tables already. They're huge, but I can even like give people like at this point, two eight foot tables. So like people have lots and lots and lots of space to spread out and do their projects, um, and feel safe and be able to craft with people and have fun. So, um, so yeah, things are looking good. It's going to be a busy fall for sure. Um, between that and Girl Scouts, <laughs> I am, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's going to be busy. So we're going camping in a couple of weeks. And so I'm trying to herd cats, um, middle, middle school cats, which is, uh, <laughs> quite quite an adventure so um and it's just it, everything's more complicated in COVID right you know so um just trying to assure people that we're doing our best to keep everyone safe and you know um but yeah so yay okay I want to do where we show our favorite card Lynn are you camera worthy how you feeling I don't have a camera on this computer but I did finish three of four which is pretty amazing for me awesome uh let me do um see i'm telling you it's not so bad I'm like let's see. <laughs> all right let's see oh is that everybody's favorite what? <laughs> okay this is my favorite so. i can do something wow. different for the picture you know i'm a oh, pink girl right. i love okay. pink all the pink <laughs> I know you're a paint girl. Okay. Let me do a little screenshot. Hold on. Let's see. Okay. One, two, three. Cheese. Nice. And then we got, because I have these two. That's funny. Okay. Awesome. Way to go. Um, all right. Let me stop the recording. Everybody else later. Um, thanks for watching guys. I will see you later. Stop recording. Yay.